welcome out to the Death Battle cast. We are the cast and crew of Death Battle. I hear you coughing over there. <laughs> <laughs> the mics probably don't That's go so the mics might, I don't know, these mics are pretty good. They might hear it. Uh, but anyway, welcome to the Death Battle cast. Uh, I'm Ben, I play Wiz. I'm Nick. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he plays Goofy. Yeah, yeah I'm discount Goofy. <laughs> let's hear it, let's hear it, let's hear it. Oh Lord. <clears throat> Come on, Maxie! We gotta put some rope behind us! <laughs> Perfect. I am Noel, and um, I'm not Goofy or Donald. I no? Still, Mickey. Maybe. He edited Mickey. Sora vs. Pit and is a writer. God, they suck at intros. Hey, I'm Chad, I play Boomstick. We're supposed to get through this in like 30 seconds and, and it move always on to the thing. Forever. We had like, 30, that was 30 seconds. Yeah, 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 look at nah, that. I don't know, we can look at the time code after this. Maybe we should we'll aspire see. for five to 10. Oh, that's, yeah. a good, that's a good idea, all right. Because it's really all it should be. Well, moving forward, we, we have a bunch to talk about today. Uh, we'll be chatting about uh, Sora versus Pit, which just came out. Um, Sweet. And th there's some questions that we can answer. Uh, Noel, you'll be helping me out with those. Yes. Unfortunately, Sam, the writer of the episode, can't be with us today because he is out of town. Um, but we will do our He's best. He's out of the hemisphere. Questions. Yeah. Yes. Um, I just want to throw something really fast at the very beginning of this video. Hey, in case you see that this was Infinity War related, that's going to be at the end of the show. No spoilers up until the very end, and we'll let you know. There'll be plenty of warnings, so don't worry. You can watch yes. up until then. I, I, yes. Yeah, I, I was just about to say that. Okay, sorry. I, just <laughs> I was literally about to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we will be talking about Infinity War, but later on, and that's the last thing that happens in the show, we're actually switching uh, the format a bit. We'll be talking about the community death battle in the middle of the show, and then the what's going on segment at the end of the show. So it's a crazy podcast. Can we turn our chair so then we're not even looking at the camera it's at that point? It's with you and the chair turning. It's, it's, it swivels. <laughs> Anyway, I'm, I'm rarely I'm here. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have to a Hims. chair that can move around the entire office floor. Thank you very much to Hims Hair Loss for sponsoring this episode of Death Battle Cast. Uh, we'll be talking about more, uh, them and especially a deal you can get with them later on in the show. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and jump into. Wait, okay, there's something on the rundown that says missed1.png. This is literally the first time I've seen this. What is this? What? You missed oh. oh no, we missed one? Where is that? Uh, it's probably, I've noticed, I think we missed more than one. missed one. Yeah, they, I noticed they put them in the microscope we have over there. There's oh, two. there's two right there. So we might have missed two, actually. Okay, let's be honest. I don't even feel bad. I think that's impressive. I thought you guys would have been finding them for the next couple weeks in like that's various true. locations. If we only, if at the end of the day there was only two that was here, we did a pretty good job cleaning them up. If you have no idea what was what's going on, um, go watch, watch last week's podcast. Last week's episode. Yeah, then again, there might be another one, or two, or three, or probably or ten. <laughs> because you said it was in the microscope, Scattered I was somewhere. like, clearly that's why you forgot about them. You need a microscope to find them. <laughs> that's what I thought initially, so... Yeah. Hey, I'm just logic, so... I right. logic. <laughs> there, see how hard was that? That was an intro, and you did it so quickly. Right? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Sora versus Pit. And if you haven't seen that death battle yet, Go watch it, because we're about to spoil that too. <laughs> so yeah, there's just, just a lot of Death Metal Cast the spoiler episode. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so, uh, Noel, yes. you edited it. I and did you edit Sam it. Sam with some of the writing and research. <laughs> Specifically, you were uh, very involved in the pit research, right? Sure, sure was. So I got a chance to play the games, uh, all three. They're pretty fun. Um, my hand kind of hurts on Uprising. A lot of people will try to say that's not a thing. It really is a thing. So Wait, did you did you beat Uprising all the way? No, not not all of it. I kind of ran out of time. You probably but. still play a lot more than I ever did. It's my copy too that you're using. It really was. I held on to it for like a year. How long was it really? What, like not like, a year. Not a year. <laughs> it was, I'll tell you <laughs> my that. Math is it was like, like a month, maybe two. Maybe like two months. Something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, we've got. Uh, it looks like seven questions. Let's to do answer. it. Hopefully seven we can questions. get uh, get them all done pretty quick. Um, but if, uh, so some of the questions, uh, we actually do kind of answer in the episode, but, uh, we can elaborate them a little Let's bit more here. Let's like the first one, uh, where was Pitt's great sacred treasure in the episode? And, uh, if you don't know, in, at the end of Uprising, the final battle against <clears throat> Hades requires a great sacred treasure, which is basically a mech suit. Yeah, yeah. Essentially. So what? why was that not included in the fight? So generally, we didn't want to bring that into the fight because then with Sora, we'd have to introduce all, like like the gummy ships. So we just kind of wanted a vehicle. To, exactly. Like yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And and with the great sacred treasure, it's there's not a lot of information on it. You spoiler alert for the game because we're spoiling everything today. <laughs> you kind of get it towards the end of the game and then immediately you lose it and then you, the game's over. Have yeah. fun. It's a one-time so, thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it required a lot of 
circumstantial things to happen in order to get it. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee that Pitt could just get it like mm -hmm. he does with the Great Sacred Treasures in every game. Yeah. So it, it, it's a little bit different in that regard. And the Three Sacred Treasures, it's, it's kind of a mainstay for all three of the games. So we definitely were going to include that as we'd have to because, you know, again, it's just kind of like you have Pitt, you have the Three Sacred yeah. Treasures. That's his thing. But as we show in the, in the, in the episode, even if you got that, then Sora would have to be given all his vehicles and it would kind of even things out. Exactly. So doesn't really change anything. Uh, question number two, why did you give Pitt his powers from Palutena? 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 Palutena. I, I never remember. We literally just voiced this episode. I don't remember what we said in the <laughs> Palutena. Uh, Palutena. Palutena. <laughs> and not Sora's drive form. Plant Utina. It sounds like the arch nemesis to Captain Plant. Plant Utina. Yeah. Plant is on. Oh, and also, if, if you've got anything to, uh, to uh, introduce or ask about in the chat, I am looking at that for all uh, you first members who are watching this live on Friday. If you're watching the archive, you can always jump in on Friday afternoon, four o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. We shoot this live. Surprise. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so why did we give Pitt his powers from Palutena and not Sora's drive forms? So um, with that one, you know, like as you go through the games and, they, and, and again, as you get like the three sacred treasures, you eventually get like the wings of Pegasus, which will grant Pitt unlimited flight. So, you know, like that's definitely something that we looked into as well. Um, and at the same time, the fight itself is under five minutes and the main stipulation with Pitt being granted any type of flight abilities from any god or goddesses in this case, Usually it's a max of five minutes. The fight is technically under five minutes. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we we had a lot of debates about whether or not to include the drive forms, whether or not <coughs> to even give Pitt the power of flight. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. yeah. Um, and ultimately, I s stood. I, I really fought for giving him flight, just because that is generally just part of his arsenal, yeah. regardless of whether or not it's from Palutena. That's what he has in the games. That's what's expected of him. That's what, what, yeah. what he has in Smash yeah. Brothers. It would be criminal and like decharacterizing, if that's a word, to not give him the power of flight. Like that exactly. wouldn't be Pit as you know him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Kid Icarus Uprising without any flight would just be him just walking the entire game. And it would yeah. be like Lord of the Rings. Now that did <coughs> leave I was Lord of the Wings. <laughs> Damn you! That was good. <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't opportunity missed. I, I'm still not 100 sure if it was right to not give Sora the drive forms, mm -hmm. but ultimately they didn't matter. They didn't. Which matter is what at all. basically led me to say, okay, Sam believes that you know we shouldn't give him the drive forms. It doesn't matter if he has them. So I'll go with what he says on this. Yeah. It makes sense um, <coughs> because there's one scene, one scene in the entire Kingdom Hearts like era where he goes into a drive form without Donald and Goofy like disappearing and it's when he gets one but mm -hmm. it's like one of the f fuck what are they called the the fairy godmother not the fairy godmother but the other one um, like grants it to him and he's suddenly in it but so i have to assume yeah. that's part of the spell being cast on him um, so that's basically the thought process with that uh, the Goofy and Donald are required for the other drive forms yes. right just yes. want to clearly state that uh, why didn't pa okay so this kind of Leads into sim it is a similar question. Why didn't Pitt have Palutena guiding him? Um, basically, like how we've done with Snake and Otacon and Sam and Grimm in mm -hmm. Snake versus Sam. Um, and I can kind of take that one, uh, mainly because that's not really that's not like a standard part of what Pitt does. It does happen in uh, Uprising, Uprising, where Palutena is like telepathically <coughs> communicating with him, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't happen in the other games, as far as we can tell. It's not like a constant for him that he's always got assistance like that. And Sora doesn't have it either. So it's not quite the same sort of comparison as, you know, Snake and Sam, who literally part of their arsenal is to have an earpiece in their head talking mm -hmm. to somebody, right. guiding them through something. And it would be a little weird because, like, Palatina, would she even be able to know anything about Sora? Yeah, and it like, really wouldn't that, add much. Eh. I don't know. Um, the, the other thing about that is that... Palutena doesn't just communicate with Pit. She actually controls Pit with the wings. Kind of like a, she can a move him pattern. around. Yeah. And if Pit were to win because Palutena controlled his movements, that would just seem unfair to me. Yeah. Like that would just seem kind of wrong. So uh, I, I didn't want to jump down that crazy rabbit. Exactly. Hole. Um, a couple of people have asked why didn't you use any music from Kingdom Hearts? Because everybody loves the Kingdom Hearts music and. The episode doesn't have any. We love we it don't as well. Feel like, we don't feel like getting sued. We figured today <laughs> wasn't a good day. Uh, may, maybe the next episode. We would like our episode to continue sued. to be able to be monetized on YouTube. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> that is why. Well, we, we have in the past, back when 
you know, we were in old school sh screw attack, shooting from the hip, wild west internet days. Yep. We would include series music in uh, in death battles, right? Because um, in everything. Uh, uh, yeah, in everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, a big part. We don't of even death do it battle, in top ten anymore. Yeah, a big part of death battles that I, I want to properly represent the characters and have it feel like when you're watching these death battles, like, oh, I remember that character, I remember that moment, I remember that music, like, I love that feeling that death battle gives. Um, but unfortunately, we have run into issues time and time again with including music about uh, companies trying to block it on YouTube, um, um, having some issues with monetization, that we just don't want to have to deal with that anymore. Yeah. So we're using well, music that we have the rights to. Yeah, and also, like, you know, it's one extra step for us to becoming even more <laughs> legitimate, right? Yes. So, like, you know, we, now we all use... Uh, either royalty free that we have licensed to through Rooster Teeth, um, or you know, it, it led us to really put an emphasis on contracting uh, composers for our battle music. Uh, and I love what that has done for us. You know, mm -hmm. like it's really cool. We got it at the beginning of uh, every cast and then you know, we're, they're on iTunes and stuff. And I, I think it's these really cool original pieces that we now get to create alongside with our episode. Yeah. You heard uh, from Chad, screw attack, slightly Okay, no. Oh, was, 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 <laughs> more and more legitimate. <laughs> legitimate. Take, 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 resetting to one. All right, resetting to one. Reset to, take, reset to one. And action. You heard it from Chad. Screw attack. Slightly legitimate now. <laughs> and cut. Yes! We got it. <laughs> it's First in the try. can. First it's in the try. can. It's a little no, okay right now. It's slightly more legitimate. You're saying we were never legitimate? Yeah. Slightly more legitimate. Like director's cut, director's cut. Anyway, director's uh, <laughs> yeah. but I will say this, if it, if it makes the fans happy, while researching and editing, I did listen to Simple and Clean on like a whole repeat, including <laughs> all the remixes, because that song is just way too no, awesome. And, and we love, like, uh, Brandon did the music for this one, and we love yep. incorporating some of the themes, some of the same, similar beats um, and rhythms into the music specifically orchestrated for these episodes. Definitely uh, Kind of like inspiration. and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, another question, uh, why didn't Pitt, okay, so this gets into the ending and the killing, the final blow. Uh, why didn't Pitt use the mirror shield to reflect the keyblade beam at the, at the ending moment there? Why wasn't he able to use the mirror shield basically to stop that killing blow? You wanna take that or you wanna? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean. I mean, this yeah. one is answered in the episode, but exactly. you see a lot of yeah. people asking yeah. about it. Like we literally measured the speed of that beam and it's way faster than Pitt could react to. I know mm. in the animation, like we have like a sound mm -hmm. where where he he he's it's, it seems like he could react to it because there's enough time in the animation, but realistically the beam is too fast. Yeah. So that might be a bit of you know just a a, a little inconsistency, I guess, in the animation. But at the same time, it's more like we're just trying to build up the hype. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Because remember, there we do present things in the fight for entertainment. We want it to be entertaining. Because yeah. if it was just like what. And like, <laughs> just like this insanely fast beam, and then suddenly someone was dead, you'd be like, what the hell? Uh, yeah, like nobody animates a laser beam that goes over the speed of light <laughs> right. as faster than the speed of light. Yeah. 90% of the time in animation, it will be fa it will be slow enough for us to actually see it, right? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, that's why, remember when we were doing the Twilight versus uh, Raven thing, and somebody argued that Twilight's faster than light because they were measuring oh, yeah, that's light dumb. traveling in animation? <laughs> That's not how it works. That's yeah. 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 If for, for the greater context, basically, there were some people, bless their hearts, they were trying to argue. Oh that no! Okay, Twilight, we don't we don't need to go into okay, like okay, fine, a fine. lot of context for this. A we got sunbeam a lot came through the clouds. Twilight squinted. People said, "Well, she's faster than light." No, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> My God, look at yeah. how fast her eyes reacted to that sunlight. Um, <laughs> but uh, on, on the keyblade beam note, uh, rods and cones. Could the keyblade keyblade beam really <laughs> kill someone? So yeah, so like, so uh, I, I, this was something that I remember talking to Sam quite a, mm -hmm. several times about because whenever I would look at, I, I wish he was here because he would know the exact examples that he showed me. I don't really remember the exact examples that he yeah. showed me, but basically I wasn't convinced until he showed me a couple examples of the Keyblade Beam actually killing somebody. Mm -hmm. um, I know that generally speaking in the games it's more used to like unlock darkness and things like that, but um, yes, there are examples. I've never played Kingdom Hearts. I have no idea what you guys are talking about right now. <laughs> Do you Black played Darkness? not even one? No, I didn't own a PlayStation until I PS4. I played one, and going mm. into this, I was confused very much so until these guys clarified a lot of things for me. So, yeah, how, it's how a does it compare world. to uh, trying to jump into Bleach right into the deep end? The way we so did. It was probably better than that. Yeah, yeah, because you can Bleach play the has games. Yeah, you can have way fun. more material, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely comparable in a way. Um, it is so complicated. Though. And then the last major question which is kind of an overall 
there's a lot to this question. It's uh, one something that uh, is commonly asked is like, why didn't Sora use reflect against Pit's weapons? Which could also be summarized as, uh, why didn't Blank do Blank in the fight when, when Blank did X Blank? X and Y did A and yeah. B. Um, so, and this question comes up in multiple episodes, like, why didn't so-and-so did th do the thing you mentioned in the fight or whatever? And it's like, we can only display like one version of the fight. Yeah. Right. So it's not like we can show literally every way that the fight would go. Yeah. There's that scene in Infinity War, in Infinity War. no spoilers, no spoilers. Yeah, There's yeah, a yeah, scene in yeah. Infinity are War <laughs> where uh, Doctor Strange is like, there are 14 million different possible futures for how this could go. We can't show all of those for a death battle, unfortunately. Well, it was so. over 14 million. That's just all he could see at the That's time. That's all that he checked. It's, I didn't want to get into the details. Well, we like, were there. I just had to clarify. Just an example. <laughs> we, we were see, there. See, death battle We were there. We were we, there. We, we, we can't do 14 million 675 fights. So. Or can we? No. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. I mean, uh, if everybody wants to pay us a billion dollars, maybe we could get... We could try. <laughs> 100 <laughs> fights. <laughs> also, somewhere related to this, like, I, I see a lot of people that love to, like, you know, say, like, Get this like great perspective. Like you're you're essentially watching as if you were God, right? You know all this information about these characters, and you know that oh, what this character's strong strong uh, strengths are, and what their weaknesses are, and what their thing. So like, really though, does the character know, like that mm. this specific thing is coming, yeah. and that he can then use this one very specific thing that he has to counter this, right? Like shark repellent. So, right, and so like we <laughs> keep that stuff in mind when we're doing our research because you know that's one of the reasons we have the rule of death battle that both characters literally just get dropped in with no prior knowledge of each other unless they actually do in their own canon. Um, and that helps us, you know, be like, okay, well clearly like this, I, I won't go into like the really <clears throat> deep details of like how we determine that, but we definitely take into account, but also like keep in mind, you're watching from a perspective of you have all the information and so, but the characters, we take it from the perspective of like them actually in a fight knowing nothing about the other person. You get to see the rundowns. They don't get to see them run down. Right, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except yeah. for Deadpool, I guess. Deadpool <laughs> actually would. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. He, he interacted with it yeah. in yeah. both of our Deadpool mm -hmm. episodes. Um, but yeah, and then uh, a couple of people talking about how uh, it, it was a 2D fight and just wanted to give a shout out to McLeod Gaming for letting us use the sprites for Pit and Sora. We've uh, worked with them several times in the past with different sprites that they've used in their yeah, games. Great. They've got some amazing sprite artists over there. You should definitely go check out their very latest game on their people. website. Yeah. Hey, hey, while we're talking about sprite art, if mm -hmm. Broadcast wants to pull up Ben's tweet uh, from the other day, he, my favorite frame in this entire oh. episode is Jerky's, uh, yeah. the way he animated Sora's face when Pitt's hitting him with, a, I we're always going to call that thing a yo-yo because it looks like a yo-yo. It looks like a yo-yo. It's um, his arm. It's, 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 it's a yo-yo. It looks yo -yo. so much like a yo-yo. I know it is. But like, <laughs> so when he hits him and then the fucking teeth, it's like the best frame. I was cracking up about it. I'm sure Broadcast can pull that up. We'll, we'll bring it up at some point. Yeah. Um, but uh, that does kind of wrap up the questions. Mm -hmm. So, before we get into the community stuff, while they're looking up. Oh, there it is. The Bam. <laughs> there it is. And as we turn, look at that. You know, if you don't have the context, if you don't look at the yo-yo as a yo-yo, it kind of looks like his jaw is massively unhinged. Oh, I, oh, now I see that. I thought he was trying to eat a giant apple. Like he's just <laughs> screaming so loud. Oh, you know this is another great representation of? Oh, I see Like. It. If anyone ever played dodgeball in high school, oh, like it looks like one of those Voight balls. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Does everyone remember that sound? Like when you get hit, I will, head? I will to my grave remember the sound of the Voight rubber ball bouncing off someone's skin, like the side of the face that <laughs> yeah. that smacking ring. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's what that made me think of. I like how accurate in the teeth you see, like the little like what is that? Uh, enamel. Is that what I, am sure. I using the right that's, word? That's look at that, look at that. Word? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calcium, <laughs> some stuff. What's in teeth and bones? I don't know. But it's an accurate depiction, which I'm just trying to say he's he's a master I like how of his detail. Eye, I like how his eye is leaking. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how hard he's getting hit. Yeah. That's a, that's so, you could digest, not digest, you could, you could analyze this frame for hours and still find new things to appreciate. Yeah, that's what we're going to do instead of talking about Infinity. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk about this for an hour. <laughs> well. I'll tell you one thing about Sora, though. He's got a great head of hair. And uh, now I'm going to tell you guys uh, about how to maintain yours or possibly even gain some back. So here's the deal. Um, when it comes to taking care of your body, uh, it can be easy to ignore things uh, as opposed to going to the doctor. Maybe you're embarrassed or you think there's no solution to your problem. Well, today I want to tell you about hymns.com. 
they are a one-stop shop for hair loss, uh, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Um, specifically today, we're going to talk about hair loss. Um, so I don't know if you know, but 66% of men start losing their hair by age 35. Uh, Hims wants to help. They offer medical grade solutions with real doctors and they offer well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions uh, to help you keep your hair. Uh, there's no waiting room so you save time and you get to talk with a real doctor from the comfort of your own home. Um, one thing I do want to be very, very clear about here is like, please, by all means, feel free to consult your doctor. Um, but when I got a chance to get on the call, on a call with um, the, one of the founders of Hims, and you know, one of their main motivations by, by starting this company was to help people who just were too embarrassed, like I said earlier, <coughs> or just there's a lot of problems that go un, undetected or unresolved because of someone just they don't want to interact with somebody or they're concerned and they have these issues. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, there's no waiting room, so you save time. You get to talk with a real doctor from the comfort of your own home. Uh, you'll be connected with a certified doctor online, and after a few quick questions and review by the doctor, they can prescribe you, and it's delivered directly to your door. Uh, as a Death Battle Cast viewer, you can get a trial month of everything you need to keep your hair for just $5 right now while supplies last. Uh, see the website for full details to determine if this is for you. Uh, this would cost hundreds if you, uh, yeah. It could potentially cost hundreds uh, going through other means. Uh, so just head uh, to him, forhims.com slash cast. That is forhims.com slash cast. Forhims slash cast. <laughs> Forhims right. slash cast? Yep. For him. I realized at the very beginning I said hims.com. And for hims. I should have changed that because it's forhims.com. But sorry, forhims.com. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I wanted to really clarify that. Anyway, um, yeah. So if it works for you, go for it. All right. And now it's time for the community death battle. Kratos versus Guts from Berserk. One of my favorite well, characters of all time, by the way. Mm -hmm. Wonder yeah. who Chad's gonna... <laughs> Out of principle, I'm arguing <laughs> Guts. Like, just because... See, that's great. In death battle, like, we don't get to do that at all. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's like, yeah. but in the community death battle... If I want to just be like, fuck you, I'm a huge Guts fan, I'm going to defend him as much as I want, <laughs> then I'm going to do that. Uh, so what you're saying is, even though you know you're wrong, I'm not you're going to nope, defend him. No, I'm saying that, like, <laughs> I can actually just, like, <laughs> like when this was proposed, I immediately was just like, I'm going to root for Guts and make the best defense for Guts that I can. No, I mean, that's generally how a yeah. debate goes. <laughs> it's like one person is rooting for the character, even if, like, that's true. it seems like the the uh, the stats are against them. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. They're still going to do it because they're on board with that character or whatever. Right. Um, You're the attorney. Okay, so we've got some answers from you guys uh, because the way a community death battle always works is we come up with a match, pitch it to you guys, and you can use the hashtag death battle cast to send us your responses, your research, your analysis of the character essentially and why they would win, and also vote on the poll <coughs> for to determine the winner of the community death battle. So we've got an answer from Ruse for uh, Kratos that we'll bring up right now. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> Ruse says, Kratos wins. He has a bigger variety of weapons and items, uh, and he is far stronger. His strength was so great that he was able to hold up against the Titan Kronos. Guts isn't nearly as strong as Kratos. All right. I mean, this is kind of yeah, the impression I get. Exactly. That's, this this man fights gods and titans. I mean, I think it's undeniable that in terms of just brute strength, Kratos. Kratos. Oh, absolutely. For sure. That doesn't Kratos. matter for Guts. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. Guts has a lot of other things going on. <laughs> I, can, so. I, I can explain. Sure it Do you want me to go into that now? Bad. Well, we got an answer okay. for Guts to maybe help support you from, uh, I think this is, okay, Sleep Near Fury KG6E8. Mm. Uh, War Daddy Kai, Kaizuka. Why, why wasn't that just written on there? <laughs> uh, Kratos is not the same God of War he used to be. He's older, more fragile. Um, Guts is still the same as he always is. His berserker armor can last longer than Kratos' Spartan rage. Kratos can feel pain in any state he's in. Pain can be a distraction. Guts challenges pain and fate. Yep. Now, I will say, um, I don't want to look at this in terms of Kratos <coughs> specifically from God of War 4 and his old age. Yeah, more like we would do it to death. More like in his Take prime. Take him at his, his prime. Yeah. Yeah. More like at his peak, as, but <coughs> still applying any feats from any point in his... Uh, in his lifetime, although I don't want to get into spoilers for God of War 4, because mm -hmm. that is... I'm not done with that game. Yeah, that, that's spoil. pretty new. Don't not want to spoil, spoil that. He's old. We, this may be is the, he? Oh, no. no. <laughs> this may be the spoilery podcast with a sword fit and... Spoil. <laughs> oh, we're not going to spoil God of War. Not for God of War 4. Not don't, for that. Don't tell us who that boy's mother is. <laughs> um, All right, so 
Arguments for, I think everybody kind of <laughs> understands the arguments for Kratos. Okay. Super strong, <laughs> lots strong. of weapons. Yeah. Lots of weapons, weapons that are incredibly powerful that right. can take on uh, gods like Hades, like Zeus, um, things, Atlas. people that ordinary people would just never be able to stand up right, to. Right. Uh, he, Kronos tried to crush him in his hand and Kratos was able to push his, it's like his fingers, I think. Mm -hmm. Kratos was able to push those aside mm -hmm. and like the Titans are strong enough to crush mountains and things like that. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what their like peak strength is, but they're like way stronger than anything Guts has ever fought. So yeah. Kratos, Kratos definitely has the power, the strength and the weaponry mm -hmm. advantage by far, unless there's something about Guts' weaponry that I just don't know about. Should we, should we uh, maybe start with what are the arguments for why Guts wouldn't just die immediately? Well, that's why I wanted to throw it to Chad and be like, what's, what's the real argument for Guts outside of what, uh, I don't have the name, Sleep Fur Furry KG-68 <laughs> says. Just call him Wardad. <laughs> Wardad, uh, Wardad. Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. So here's the thing. <laughs> One, and like, I know that this exists because of plot, but like, Guts survives shit that no human could survive. It's like one of those scenarios where it's like like Batman we talk about, like there's no fucking way Batman is just human, right? Sure. Um, like, so he's taken on some really powerful people, like uh, fighting the God Hand and the Apostles and things like that. Like he has been like, you name it, like smashed through the ground, through concrete pillars. He's been impaled, stabbed, cut, set on fire, whipped, had his arm cut off, had his eye gouged out, like, he has been through fucking everything, and like shit that would absolutely kill a mortal man, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just without his berserker armor. So my big thing, and the reason that uh, I don't think Kratos is over, like having a being stronger than Guts will really uh, benefit him here, is because Guts' his berserker armor will hold him together long enough to land the killing blow. Just a quick refresher if you don't know what Guts' berserker armor is. He's already ridiculously durable on top. <coughs> then you get this badass armor that will literally pull him back together. He's had his arm completely broken and twisted around and it has spun it all back and it shoots spikes under the inside to basically rebuild the bones to keep to, so that he can continue to fight with it. Essentially, the Berserker ar armor allows you to continue to fight until you have run out of blood. Question. Yes. If if he's wearing the Berserker armor mm -hmm. or he's putting it on, because um, it's not like a suit, it like wraps around him, right? So, well, normally he has just the armor on. He kind of chills with that right. most of the times, and then the, the head pops over right. him. It's it, like a dog's yeah. head. So it's thing. not like he has to get <laughs> like a new suit. It's, like, it's like Venom. Yeah. It kind of is like Venom. Venom. It's Straight a lot up like Venom. Um, so, if Kratos were to hit him it. hard enough that his arm doesn't just get broken, but pops off or gets cut off or something like that, uh, and the arm is literally detached, mm -hmm. can the Berserker armor put it back? Like, <laughs> Interesting. Bring it back. I, I haven't seen that ever happen to him. So, like, I, in that, I'm not fully caught up in the manga because I haven't read it in a while. Um, but I, I don't remember, like, the only time Guts, when he lost his arm, he did that to himself with a half, like, broken sword. Um, to get away from a demon. So he's also very, very dedicated. That's another thing about Guts, like he will literally do anything. Like he will sacrifice anything he needs to to accomplish his goal if he's motivated. Kratos right. is kind of like yeah. that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he has quite as Im like visually impressive examples of him taking a hit in order to win something or, or to, mm, to accomplish a goal? There was a, I, I did a little bit of digging because I've never played the first, main, the main God of War series. Uh, the fourth one is my first real jump into the series. But uh, Kratos has the scar on his stomach. Mm -hmm. And the reason he has that is because I think he got stabbed. Either way, you could see all the way through him. And he just like, I guess flexed hard <laughs> enough that the whole wound sealed back up. <laughs> <laughs> like within seconds. Uh. I, I, I watched it happen. It just, so I, he you know, doesn't need armor to do that. I'll say this: I, I would fight a man who had armor that looks like Venom, but I wouldn't fight a man who wears the ashes of his wife and daughter. <laughs> yeah. I would literally be like, that "Hey, is, dude, wait, wait, wait hold on, you need some white. lotion. You need some." Yeah. Lotion. That is nothing in Guts's universe. <laughs> that man has seen the most awful shit that anyone could possibly conjure up. Um, so a couple things I want to also talk about. So Guts has been able to block. Um, despite having, okay, his, his sword, Dragon Slayer, is fucking titanic. They make it such a big deal about the sword, they're like, it's not even a sword, it's like a gigantic slab of metal, right? Like, right. this guy 
has somehow managed to block, he was fighting this weird like bug demon thing and it has these like whips and they're like flying faster than like eyes can track and but Guts is literally like fucking blocking all of them with this titanic sword, right? Um, so another time he's dealt with incredible speed. And the thing I'm going for this too is like, I, I think a lot of people's arguments is like, well, Kratos is really strong and he's got the Blades of Chaos, right? So like he could overwhelm him with attacks. I think Guts could easily block that. And he's also, he's very, very tactical. Whereas like Guts, uh, Kratos seems to be like, I gotta fight this thing. It's gonna be like, let's raw power versus raw power, right? Um, and occasionally like, let me pull a thing onto something, right? But like, so Guts was fighting this weird like pixie thing. Um, who could go like supersonic, whatever. She was so fast, he literally couldn't hit her and she could fly, right? And so he's like starting to get fucked up and he's like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. He manages to try and take a hit to the face and he turns so that her, she has this like big like spear on the front of her head so that it impales through his cheeks so that he can bite down on it so that as she's taking off, she now takes him with him and then he, he uses that to, like, start hacking her down. Like, I, I cannot stress to you enough, like, <laughs> Guts will do anything. Yeah, it's pretty beastly. That but, is. like, yeah. you mentioned that you think Guts could block Kratos' stuff. Mm -hmm. he, he, sure, he might, he might be able to, like, visually see and react to it. Mm -hmm. But does anything he have, is that going to be able to actually not break against something that takes down Gods? So, on the Dragon Slayer is interesting. Um, it has some sort of like mystical ability now because essentially two things. Well, it has the power to kill things that are in the demon in realm, the sort of. Because he's killed so many demons that like it has absorbed some of their demonic energy or whatever and allows like it, the sword cuts on both like the physical and the like demonic slash ethereal plane. Um, Which I don't think is gonna do much more to Kratos than... It'd be interesting to see how that affects, like, magic. Well, uh, does that change the sword's durability at all? How durable is Dragon Slayer? It's never been broken. It's never it's been, never been, been broken. broken. Scratched? I don't think so. Like I said, there's been more manga that I haven't read, so I would love sure. to build back I'm that Sure, I'm just up, wondering, because Kratos does have some pretty heavy weaponry, uh -huh. specifically built to kill gods who are very durable, mm -hmm. or to you know, break through things that are very durable. I'm wondering if the sword, like, I have no doubt that Guts would be fast enough to keep pace mm -hmm. with Kratos. Maybe even be faster. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know for sure, but I could totally see that being a thing. Um, but if he were to block a hit from whatever Kratos' strongest weapon is, like the Blade of Olympus, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, would Dragon Slayer hold up against that? Against that weapon a and Kratos' strength? Weapon. It's I don't know about that. That's just interesting. I don't know because, like, I've never seen it break or be harmed <laughs> in any way, and like it's blocked crazy shit. Like yeah, people but, who can like. But that's kind of a no limits fallacy, though. Like just because well, you've never seen it happen doesn't mean it's well, right? So that's but I, but you can't say the opposite way too. Like of course, you know, of so course. like. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't bank everything on breaking Dragon Slayer. My, my big argument for Guts, and fuck that, even if you broke Dragon Slayer, like, Guts is not like stand around, right? It's like, oh, are we gonna fight? I am going to kill you. Like, it is, he will be going in full force, and if that does not work, then he will think of how he can gain an advantage. So, does he have to get stabbed in some way? Does he have to get wrapped up in a chain to get pulled in or whatever? But like, even if you, even if, Kratos could break Dragon Slayer, Guts would use the remaining part of Dragon Slayer to stab him in the face with it or like whatever he has to do. Like, I guess, I honestly think Guts' willing, like willingness to take a hit in order to succeed mm -hmm. might end up his down as his downfall. But the Berserker armor will hold him together. But I don't know if it could hold him together against what Kratos is capable of dishing out. Like, if Kratos hits him hard enough, there goes his arm. There goes his leg. I don't like, know. It's just off the body. I gotta look into the Berserker armor because it's been like it's been a while since I researched guts. Um, but the Berserker armor has been like passed down and like it is crazy. Like I don't think it's ever been broken. Um, it, like I, I really would be surprised if you could rip a limb off or cut a limb off when guts is wearing the Berserker armor. So my. Would well, you know what it's made out of though? I don't remember. I don't know if they ever go into it. Uh, like, has, has anything like? Cut through it before, surely, right? I'm looking at its page right I don't now. Think so no, huh? No, it's just things like general raw force can. I mean, how many sword? How many characters with swords does guts go up against? Usually, Apart from Zod. Um, 
Not a lot. Usually yeah. it's like it's weird demonic shit. Or, <laughs> like and they have like with a berserker armor, he usually like they just like they'll try and like twist a limb or like he gets hit so hard that it broke his yeah, arm. Yeah, it's back, usually right? like a broken arm or twisted muscle or something like that. Yeah, that, that the suit then puts back together in right. a grotesque way. Right, because the suit has hinges, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. like at the end of the day, like you know, the arm will snap and this will go back, but then it literally will just put itself back into place and fix. Fix is a very loose word. Whatever <laughs> flesh was underneath, right, so that he can continue to fight and function. So I'd be really surprised if you could cut it off. I feel um, like Kratos though would treat him like an action figure, and you know when you like just like bend the arms and do all crazy shit with it, just so that you know, just so you can play with it. I feel like he'd do that to. To guts. <laughs> He'd just be like, hey, let's see what this does right here. Gut and then it comes back and he's like, that's entertaining. Guts's head is exposed the whole time he's in the Berserker armor, right? No. no. Unless no? with oh. the Venom no. situation. He, he walks around with it exposed and then when it's like serious fighting time, okay. a dog head, <laughs> like yeah, Venom, it's, it's the beast that's him. within, it's the demon that's within yeah. uh, uh, Guts. It kind of manifests itself as the armor around him. So it's like a wolf head, which okay. I don't think the beast can actually get out and kill things, right? I don't think so. Yeah. So that wouldn't necessarily become a part of the fight. No, it's just more like that's like guts. That's his madness that he's fighting. Sure. It's basically a visual reference. Because yeah. I was gonna say, like, I've, this is not a God of War spoiler, but you should see the things Kratos will do to a head. Because <laughs> 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 like, the, the times I've seen guts that I can think of, he's armored except for his head. So. All right. Well, we've been talking about this for a lot, a long yeah. time. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up. So you know my argument. You're obviously voting for guts. Yep. Has he convinced either of you? No. no, I would no. need to. I could be convinced either way. Still, if we were taking this on as like a serious matchup, um, I'd be willing to listen to all arguments. But right now, I'm still leaning more toward Kratos. He just has too many things you going God in his face. Yeah, versus demon killer. I, I, mm -hmm. I honestly think that this could warrant some more investigation mm -hmm. into the exact feats and stuff because I do think, like, it'd be a little, like, hasty just to judge Kratos as the winner just because he's stronger. Right. Yeah. Like, I feel like. Guts has enough going for him that he might be able to make up for that. Mm -hmm. However, so just cool if Guts could win. Just based on this, I don't know if that's enough of an argument to say that he should win without mm -hmm. going into it more. So I'm gonna have to vote for Kratos right now. Uh, I would say Guts has the best worst backstory out of the two. I will say that he what? wins. He wins in shittiest backstory. Oh yeah, like his shittiest, life. As in like, not like it's bad. Life. As in like he went through <laughs> some shit. He went through some dark well, stuff. Kratos goes through a lot of shit, and then he just kind of goes into vengeance mode, and things are still kind of shitty for him. But I don't know. Things never get better for Kratos. <laughs> yeah. Like things kind of get better for Guts. The problem with Guts is that things get better, and then they. Oh, fall yeah. apart all over again. <laughs> oh yeah. Like whereas Kratos is on the steady line of depression, <laughs> Kratos or, or whereas Gu or Kratos is on the steady line of depression, Guts is all over the place. <laughs> Even when, like going into areas of happiness they never knew existed, and then they're all f like fucking murdered right in front of him. Oh yeah. Repair. It's terrible. <laughs> like he has a hor he went through such horrible shit in his childhood, and the second he finally like rebuilt a family, e everyone is horribly slaughtered. <laughs> Or raped, or like it's it's yeah. terrible. Like he has been through some bad, bad shit, and it just keeps happening. So, River anyway. Storm Four in the chat says that he wants to see Griffith in a death battle now, or Ooh. or, or full on fem. Griffith versus Batman. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I love to to bring. We had guts in a death battle a while back. I love to bring him back, or bring a. a Probably more so bring Griffith into it, or yeah. or, or something like the that. The guts nightmare episode is one of my favorite, just because of. I saw more comments in that of people being like, because every now and then we get to introduce a character to the audience, you know, mm -hmm. like they might not have heard of. And I saw so Bucky, many people. Bucky, Captain Bucky O'Hare. Yeah, like Bucky O'Hare. Um, but I saw so many people in that one that was like, whoa, like that's really dark, but Berserk sounds awesome. I'm going to start reading that. I'm going to start watching that. I did so many comments and I got so many messages from it too. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, All right. Well, let's go ahead and bring up the poll to wrap up this community death battle and see what you guys had to vote. Oh, oh no! Look who lost! Percent of you were right. Poor <laughs> I, I knew that this would happen because it's Kratos. So people are gonna say Kratos, but sure, you, yeah. I got you. Well, I mean, I want to do this death battle. The community, the community speaks the truth. I <laughs> Kratos <do> wins. <laughs> I want guts to win. I think that'd be All cool. Right, so our next, but. our next community death battle, as requested by. Uh, Jennifer Johnson on the uh, Request to Death Battle forum that is on every single YouTube video of ours uh, is going to be in, um, in celebration of Avengers Rocket Raccoon and Groot versus 
Ratchet and Clank. Oh, <laughs> all right. Wow. I actually love this one a lot. This could be really fun. Uh, so if you think you know who wins, go ahead and let us know using hashtag DeathBattleCast on Twitter. There will be a poll up on Monday after this episode has gone public on YouTube over the weekend. Um, so you can vote on that poll right then. Be sure to follow Screw Attack on Twitter so you can keep up to date with that. Yeah. And then we will discuss Rocket and Groot versus uh, Ratchet and Clank on the next episode of Death Battlecast next Friday. Um, and this is the point where we would usually wrap up the episode. But for this special episode of Death Battlecast, we are going mm -hmm. to go into some spoiler talk. This so is your warning. It's time to find out what's going on. With Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. <Very> yes. <laughs> all right. Nicely done. He's so yes. all episodes. For this that. is a spoiler warning right now. Uh, uh, so we've got spoilers written down there. We got it in the chat. Uh, thanks to Michael. Um, and we will be talking spoilers about this fucking crazy thing. Dead, dead, gone, gone. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yeah. all of us have seen it. Um, Chad, you literally just saw it this morning. Yep. Uh, so I guess, I, I don't want to, like everybody and their grandmother has made a YouTube video about like this video or this movie mm -hmm. about uh, the character deaths and the things that have happened. So I don't want to just make this discussion like a retread of everything that everybody's already heard. Um, so I've kind of looked into a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, but I, and, and there's some stuff that I do want to discuss about like what happened in this movie, um, about what might happen in Avengers 4. But uh, I guess the best way to start is just get our general opinions of the movie. Oh, yeah. Either way. So, uh, Chad, since you literally just saw it. Yeah. Like, what did you think? I thought it was incredible. Like, fucking awesome. Awesome, awesome movie. Um, I just watched Thor Ragnarok last night, too, to make sure I was, like, all on the same page. Again, I got kids, man. Like, I don't, movies, it takes me a while. Um, Excuses. Do you see how here's the thing. Like, I, I, I really like the Marvel humor. I thought Thor Ragnarok did a little bit too much of it. Like, it was really yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In that. Um, and then I thought they did a really good job with this one. So like, there I couldn't believe the movie was two minute, two hours and forty minutes. Uh -huh. It wasn't long enough for me. Like, it normally really I fast. normally I start feeling that you know after nope. the two hour mark I start to get like okay when, like it really helps because it goes like it right does and it, and it starts and then it starts there's states and, like, right away. Yeah. Think yeah. of what a monumental task the writers and directors had of juggling not only all of these characters, but also these actors, their contracts, when they get screen time, and how to turn all of this into a cohesive story that is not only fun to watch, but easy to follow. Like, I was fucking it, it blown is, away. It is a miracle that it is not, like, a complete mess right. yeah. to watch. Um, There'd be times when I'd be like, man, I, I feel like I haven't seen Iron Man in forever, and then he's, like, on screen, the next scene. It, I, oh. I feel like there were a few points in the movie where we would spend too much time away from some characters where you or it would come back to another scene and you'd be like oh yeah uh, Iron Man and, and Doctor Strange have been over here doing a thing right I feel like I haven't seen them in a long time Did, I didn't miss anything right mm. uh, but fortunately that kind of feeling I, I got that feeling at least a couple during a couple scene changes unfortunately uh, or, or fortunately that feeling didn't last too long because right. yeah. they did a really good job with writing the characters in a way that like if you missed a previous movie or or even when going into those scenes that it there wasn't a whole lot to know they gave you contextual it. relationship like yeah. where relationships stand between characters that you need to understand they yeah, did that it didn't feel like we had to do all the homework necessarily in order to get into this movie and like be able to predict or understand where all these characters are because the movie kept telling us um, like where they where they're at what they're feeling um, how the relationships work with these characters, yeah. but not in an obnoxious, boring recap yeah. way. That was Granted, like, I think if you hadn't watched the previous movies and this was the first one you were going into, you wouldn't get a very good experience out of it. No, It'd be you, very you confusing. Have to be but Chad, did you ever see Black Panther? I haven't yet. Okay, really, really did you feel lost on that? Because no, like, 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 it's, like it's just con also like uh, contextual. Like I told you, all you need to know is it's Wakanda. It's yeah, it's high tech <laughs> Africa. Right, but all, it also helps. Like I mean, I know about Black Panther and yeah. Wakanda yeah. and that shit. We've I did, done that I did Black a, I did a death battle. Right, we did a death battle. I did a who is you know. So like it's like I totally get that part. So like yeah, no, not lost at all there. One thing I also want to talk about is like so since they like again just in awe of having to juggle all this, but then they also took time to create these really cool elements. Can I tell you, like one of my favorite scenes in the movie? is when uh, Doctor Strange grabs Tony Stark and they're hanging out at 
uh, in strange manner or whatever, right? At the edge of the temple. The sanctum. Yeah. Sanctum, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, and then they start to, like, you know, hear that, like, oh, shit, something's going on. And there's that, like, all the fucking people running by. It feels like a disaster movie. Mm -hmm. It was done so well when Tony mm -hmm. walks out. And the way that that whole just sequence where it does feel like a disaster movie. And then he helps the people help and they turn and then you see it and, like, you see this I was like, I was like, that was fucking awesome. Like they did such a good job, and they found time to do that and still give that. There that is moment. a fast, almost fascinating use and 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 a uh, uh, decision making process behind the use of handheld filmmaking with this. Mm -hmm. There are so many moments in the film where they switch from like a like a very like still shot to handheld camera right. and then back and forth. Yeah, and it's. Remarkably well done. Oh yeah! Like uh, the Russo brothers are are very well known for this. If mm -hmm. you've ever watched Arrested Development, there's a lot of handheld elements for it. But even in their action films, like fucking Captain America, Winter yeah. Soldier, like the handheld element and the switching between that and, and and static shots is just beautifully done. It's one of the only like that's just something that most directors would just not try to do. It's either handheld or static. You don't mix the two unless there's like very good reason for it, but it mm. keeps happening in this film. It's great, and it works. Oh yeah, yeah, it works really well. I think the reason why they were able to balance so many characters and make it a cohesive story is that while most people are paying attention to Tony and all these dudes down here that are dead at this point, really the movie <laughs> is it's Thanos's movie. Yes, that's it it's that's his true. story. It's his arc. He's that's the big boy. Where, that's why, like, when you're saying I haven't seen Tony in a while, oh wait, here he is. You're not really worried about that because, boom, it's really just like yeah, Thanos yeah. is like, yo, I sent you to go do well, some stuff. There's there's two methods they did. One is they really focus a lot on Thanos. Yeah, and you almost follow Thanos throughout uh, most of the movie. Um, I really wanted him to win some, but, like, subconsciously. But uh, <laughs> they also split everybody up. <laughs> they also split everybody up. Yeah, like there's no big. Avengers the running shot? together. Every right. Avengers movie has that shot where it's yeah, all yeah. the Avengers all together. That's not in this movie. No. Yeah. Like Tony's off on his own with a couple Guardians. Uh, Cap. He's the biggest stuck. thing we get is Cap in Wakanda with a bunch of the Wakanda uh, uh, Black Panther and yeah. people who followed him there. But even most that's of the not Avengers like, got there. When Thor showed up, uh, we got maybe like of half them. of them. That was most of them. I guess it's point. most of them. Um, but at the very, very end when Thor shows up, sure, yeah. uh, the majority of them are there. But we, I don't think we still get that one shot that has all of them there, other than... Nope. No, no. No, you never did it. Never yeah, did it. we never get the Avengers shot. I know that's coming in the next yeah. one. You're gonna well, get a it's big, already been it's discussed. Gonna, it's, it's gonna be a wall yeah. of <laughs> It's, it's <laughs> already been talked about. Uh, I think Sebastian yeah, Stan has already talked about this shot, where all, like, 40 of them are there. Like, it's already been talked about. It is happening in Avengers 4, but, uh... It didn't happen in this one, which was surprising, and it kept things, everything felt much, I, this word is so overused, but much more grounded. Like, you were with these characters, you were with these characters, and the idea that it was like an interdimensional thing with like a million characters never really, like the weight of it never really over, oh, like, it never really took over the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could always focus on one story, and then this story, and this, and this story. Although right. speaking of like other worlds and stuff, like, we were talking about Thor joining up for that fight at the end. I thought it was so cool how we were cutting back and forth between uh, that fight and Thor making the hammer. And it, like, if I remember correctly, it kind of, like, escalates in, like, speed, how much it's cutting back and forth until, like, those two moments sort of, like, form into one. Yeah. And as soon as yeah. that hammer's formed... And you see the Bifrost? Yeah, and then, yeah, the Bifrost, yeah, all, all of it was... Two different scenes all becoming one thing, and they're happening like worlds apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's not like anything special. Like, that's no, what no, a lot of action movies do. I literally just watched the finale of Doctor Who season one. It does the exact same thing, where Rose is in another dimension and she has to get back, and she's like building this, or trying to get into the TARDIS and stuff, and it's the exact same structure. So, but the fact that they were able to make it with so many characters or to make it work with so many characters is really impressive. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Thanos as a character and how his ideology works in this movie. And a lot of people are really expressing that he is the best villain. Can, um, I, can I give a really petty thing first before you get into the sure. deep stuff? Did it irk anyone else that he was like never fucking wearing his helmet? No, 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 because no. no, he didn't need it. He had the stones. I actually really like how they did that. He wears the helmet at the beginning. He uh -huh. fights Hulk in it. Uh -huh. And then he gets the second stone. He's like, I don't need I don't this need armor. this shit anymore. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I was you just wanted to see that? I did. I wanted to see more, like, armored Why? Thanos kicking ass. I don't know. Because, like, I figured... In the like, next movie, he's, he's, he's a fucking be TNT character. It's not like he has the contract to show his face so much. Yeah, but like, I feel like if he, if he didn't show his face as much, like, it wouldn't humanize him as much. I feel like that was the whole point. 
if he turned around I to Gamora with tears coming down his face and he had this giant yeah, bulky armor what? setup going on, it would have looked silly. It off there Can we it there. I don't know. I just wanted to see some more combat with the helmet. It was just a really minor thing. Can we appreciate mind. his CG was way better than Steppenwolf's? Like, <laughs> CG, like, the fact that it's like, if you want to like, compare those two, it's like, I was like, I was so sold that that was Josh dude, Brolin. Even, oh, yeah, but dude, even Ragnarok had some <laughs> rough CG. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was, yeah. again, I was watching that last night, and I was, there were a couple moments I was like, oh, Jesus. Sure. Yeah, like, all the work on, you You forget that he's a giant You forget he's a, yeah. Monster. Yes. You're just like, this is it, man. Oh, it, so good. It's very well done. Yeah. Um, even though there are definitely some moments in this movie where the CG becomes really apparent, mostly to do with either the Infinity Gauntlet holding somebody or poor Banner in that Hulkbuster suit. Yeah. Like, oh, every yeah. time his head was sticking out of that, it just it looks wrong. like yeah, It looks like he's lit <laughs> no! differently. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that shot. Um, <laughs> oh, well, him turning into the Hulk and back was fine, but any time his helmet was off and you saw him, especially yeah. that last shot with everybody lined up. Yeah, and he's uh, got, like, missing the arm and his head's up there. He's clearly... Like, like just like photoshopped in last yep. minute so but um uh but yeah thanos looked so good the whole time yep. um like like the fact that this movie has a scene where the villain is a giant purple space monster there are a million characters around him and then he turns around and he's fucking crying yeah, yeah. and that works is a like that is impossible. <laughs> like <laughs> how does that yeah. fucking work? Uh, I do think I, I do wish his character like I do wish there was a little bit more about him. I wish he had to struggle with his problem a bit more, because uh, we never we never got the scene where he has to cope with the fact that he's killing off half of the universe. Well, hopefully, by the, the time next we meet movie, him, we've he, we've already we'll he's see already some regret. Him. Hopefully, got, in the next movie, we got a little bit of it. When no, he's talking man. to Child Gamora right after he does it. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's like, what cost me everything? Yeah. yeah, remember, there's that What's little it cost? bit. She's like, everything. okay, well, that's different. That's uh -huh. different. I'm talking more about like during that scene when he gets child Gamora. I wish there had been a scene where he has to choose Gamora, where there are two kids and he has to choose one of them, and he's like, "Well, we already know he's he's really he hates Nebula." Yeah, no, like, like or, or something like that. You know, like the the weight of choice on him is never really established, but everything else with him is really well done. The the, the problem I have is that his motivation is so otherworldly and so like nonsensical that it is hard for me to, to feel for him. I think it would have been better. If instead of doing it then, if we got that flashback scene that he just explained, it was like, I'm not doing that again. I fuck, this used to be my world on Titan and it was all beautiful and like, but we had overpopulation and yada yada. And then, and like, if we had actually gone, seen him making that argument and then like kind of swallowing that and like sure. being rejected and then watching like his loved ones die, like, I feel that, that would have done it for you. Sure, I mean, any number of different things. I feel like the Gamora one would have been the easiest one to just put in. Just have Gamora have an actual sister, and then Thanos has to choose between them. Add, like, five seconds of film into it. Bam. Mm. You got an emotional, like, response from him that he has to... Like, I hate, like, suggesting, like, changes to a movie, because there's so many different mm. things. You can't just change the yeah. story. There's uh, author intent, method of creating it. There's a lot of different elements to it, but, like, having something... I, I just didn't really buy... Him, like his motivation is something that I should understand. Really, I did by the end. Uh, initially, I was like, eh, and then, but I think they they addressed it. I think in like three like main times. Like sure. Like by the last one, at uh, the yeah. I was on board. And then because and then they kind of capped it with that Gamor uh, child Gamora flashback, sure. whatever dimension reality thing he was in. Soul. Like, well, whatever that was. Yeah, that's the soul, soul world. Soul. We'll yeah. talk about that in a bit. Um, but. Uh, I, I guess it does make sense in the context of the theme of the movie, mm -hmm. or like one of the two themes, is that it's a th it's a story about extremes, mm -hmm. and the other the the thing that Thanos is battling is what Captain America introduces is that you don't trade a life. Yeah. The entire movie is about the value of one person. Right. Literally, the entire battle is about the entirety of Wakanda sacrifices itself for some stranger. For some purple stranger with a stone in his head. Yeah. But they've never, they don't know who he is. Yeah. But that's what's going on. So the entire movie is about the value of one life. Can we talk about Visions for a second? Uh, that, that is one thing that irked me about this movie because it's like, Vision's fucking ridiculous, right? And so, like, that was one of the things that I was thinking about too is like, what are they gonna do for Vision? And so their plan was like, clearly they needed to, like, you're not, talking about his power and how yes. they like that's they had to nerf him. right. So it's right. And the, the way they did it, like it, I was a little bummed because I wanted to see like 
we are now on this level of combat. I wanted to see Vision go fucking crazy, right? But instead, we get Paul Bettany professing his love for Scarlet Witch, and then just out of nowhere, like, Bleh! like he stabbed. I thought they were gonna kill him, like right there, and I was like, oh shit. Uh, but no, instead, he spends the entire fucking movie dying. Okay, like real quick, if anybody is joining the show live, like right now, we are talking about spoilers. So if you don't, I mean, want it, says, to, it says so in the bottom right corner. Yeah, I know, but, but I do screwed. want to every so often because we are live to like reintroduce. That's that. true. Good point. Um, but like, he's that was the thing that bummed me. Like, like. He spent the whole movie dying, and I know why they did it, because Vision's crazy, and they didn't want to deal with all the, his powers and shit that he can do. And so, like... But I like that they didn't have their secret weapon type of thing, you know, because, like, in Civil War, when he shows up, and he's just like... Mm, <laughs> and he tells Cap, he's like, I know you think what you're doing is right, but you're really not. You're just like, oh, shit. That's <laughs> it. We're done. But in this one, you're like, yo, we don't have Vision no more. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, what do we do at this point? And then Tony's on some donuts flying thing out there. Yeah, yeah. Like, they were stuck. Like, I, I like that idea. That I was were... just a little bummed. Like, I understand why they did it. it I just was like, I really wish... Vision could have had his moment uh, since we are now on this scale of battle and what's going on. Sure. Did you uh, think that when Thanos uh, poked Tony with the little sword sorry. that Tony was going to die in that moment? Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Did you think oh, 100%? Yeah. Did you like, did? Oh, yeah. I mean, because he stabs him on the side. Yeah, so but I, I yeah. every time somebody gets stabbed here and not here, I they're know. not dying. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Like it never. That's that's the telltale mark. I know, but I, I couldn't tell where he was stabbed at first. Mm -hmm. You know, it was so like I thought it was in the gut. And I know it up. did. It did affect a lot of people because everybody expected him to die. Because Robert Downey Jr. is like, I'm so done being Iron Man. Like I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out, I'm I, out. I wanted to get to that also as well. So kind of like looking to the future of Avengers movies and Marvel in general. So we know Robert Downey Jr.'s uh, contract expires in some way around this time. He said um, he was out, and so did, uh, is it Chris Evans? Chris Evans has said that yeah. Avengers 4 is his last movie. Why, why, I was blown away that all the people who said they don't want to do this anymore, they don't turn into dust. <laughs> like, but they're probably gonna sacrifice themselves in the next one. Well, Possibly, one of them, I'm know. sure, is going yeah. to sacrifice themselves. Mm -hmm. The general consensus for people who've watched the movie is Strange had some plan, for tons. which is why he, did not allow Tony Stark to die, even though he said that he would. Um, so he, yeah, he sacrificed the Well, that, for one thing, that goes back to the, the value the of a single I life know. theme, um, but it also is why people think that Strange looked into the future, he saw the one future where they would win, and was like, oh, Tony needs to be at the, at the end. So but he has to be stabbed. To <laughs> like, I wish Tony was like, why did you still? wait? Like, why did you wait for me to get stabbed well, for him? If for you, you go into that, like, there, there are a lot of different <laughs> elements. Because there are so many characters in play and so many different like plot points in play, there are so many different elements where yeah. you could say, like, the plot doesn't make much sense because like Thanos could just create infinite resources. I know. Uh, Strange could just turn back time before they even get to Titan. Uh, Ooh, you know, like there's all sorts though? of different things. Hey, let's be honest. The one thing that we can say is kind of shitty is that, like, I hate, did you also hate the part where they were like, uh, when they're on the flying donut uh, going towards Titan, and right before Tony gives a speech of why we should take the fight to Thanos on his own turf, Doctor Strange turns to Tony and is like, can you get us back? It's like, fuck you, you're a yeah. wizard. Like, <laughs> well, make your circle and yeah. take us back to Earth. I about that too. I don't know if he can, we don't really know the full extent of Strange's powers. Technically, yeah. he's still pretty early on in his career. As far as we know, I don't know. I don't know where he Strange... He seemed to be pretty confident in every single thing he was doing. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't really know where Strange falls in the line of like, whether or not he's still kind of learning what he's doing, or if is he's like a, Illuminati the, levels Doctor Strange. We'll take us to the Inception <laughs> world. Is there, is there, with, with Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, is, is there a Doctor Strange 2 in the works? Has that been confirmed? The, the only sequels that have been confirmed are Spider-Man 2 and Black Panther 2. Can I say something on that note though? Like the the ending of this movie would have it was really great. I okay. loved the ending. This is the thing that everybody says in every single YouTube video. Oh, it would have been so much more impactful if we didn't know that the Spider Man was gonna come back. Black Panther was gonna come back. Yes, that is true. Damn. But thank you. But <laughs> I, I we we've got like two minutes. So uh, that's why I wanted to talk about um uh, contracts. Is that we know that uh, Evans is gone, Junior is gone uh, Robert Downey Jr. is gone. Sebastian Stan apparently has like five more movies. Oh wow. Yeah, so they're probably making him Captain America. Um, but yeah, sure, it would have been more impactful, but I don't think the movie expected you to be sad that these characters are dead. In fact, I don't even know if they're dead. I kind of, I'm, I'm I wanted to get to this because the reason why Avengers 4, the title, hasn't been revealed and why it wasn't apparently revealed at the end of this is because it is a spoiler for the end of Avengers 3. 
So why did Resurrection. They not, why did they not reveal it at the end of Avengers 4 if it's a spoiler? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if those people are actually dead or if the sequel is Secret War and they were transported to another world. Hmm. It would make sense. And conveniently, the teleportation makes it look like they're falling into yeah. ashes. Well, it would make sense. <laughs> For one thing, we know that Gamora is going to come back in some way because Guardians 3 is supposed to be about Gamora. We know that she's in the Soul Stone because Thanos talks to her at the mm -hmm. end. So she is on the Soul World, or at least her soul is there. Right. So what's probably going to happen is Nebula is going to get the Infinity Gauntlet like she does in the Infinity War comic. Mm -hmm. She tries to bring back Gamora. The Infinity Gauntlet is all damaged or whatever. Which so we some saw. bullshit happens, but Gamora does come back in some way that maybe uh, Nebula doesn't really expect. I don't know. Any, any number of things could happen, but Gamora's coming back. Can, I do think everybody else who dies before the end is dead gone. permanently. Yeah, like Except Loki's for Gamora. Gone. I think everybody else is dead permanently. Yeah, poor Loki. Like, right out the gate, man. <laughs> like, yeah. No, poor Heimdall. He didn't, he, he didn't get a chance to really do anything in any yeah. movie. He, it's Idris Elba, too. Yeah, I know! He's, got, he's, he's such a great, great actor. actor. And I, it's just yeah. like, you lost your sword, buddy. <laughs> he served his purpose as Heimdall. Like he did good. He had, he had some. He had his moment in Ragnarok too. He got to save the. He saved the Asgardians. Ah. And then like he he deserves. So and he had his more. last moment too. He was just like, fuck you. I'm saving Bruce. And he died. He's like, like one a minute fucking in. boss. Like I've never seen such a just defiant death face in my life in a movie. He's like. <laughs> and then he just stays that way with that lip bit. Fuck you. Like, it was just about to come out. Like, forever my <laughs> dead face will be starting to say, Oh you. my god. Yeah, it, was, like, it was great. Um, <laughs> oh, dude, lost my shit when Iron Spider happened. Um, oh, the, the, yeah. I almost said tentacles, but yeah. the, when the legs come so out. So cool. Oh, dude, when the suit wrapped around him, I was just like, Oh shit, we're doing this now. And then they ejected him, and I was like, Oh. It's, it's, he said, Happy Trails. Like, Two movies <laughs> late, but it's here now. It is. I did, but then I was like, and then they ejected him with a parachute, and I was like, Oh, okay, <laughs> you're saving it for later. And then he's like, I stowed aboard. I'm like, No, we're not. We're right. It's back. Uh, I had so much fun. So many characters had so many moments. Uh, I would, you know, obviously there's a billion things that you wish, like, God, I wish this person would have gotten more time. Um, but they at least did a really good, they tried to give everybody at least like an epic moment. Like Everybody got a good mo moment yeah. somewhere. Every single character got a moment. Yeah, like I fucking Even love War Machine, by the way, like mm -hmm. from the comics. And uh, when uh, he had his moment in the war when they like let all the things in. and Because like it was pissing me off because there's so many things. And it's got like Bucky using like a single gun. Oh, weird, yeah. And I'm like, fucking when is War Machine going to lay down? And at least they gave him that moment where he's like. And then the shoulder cannon comes up. He's like. <laughs> like, okay, so this is, and then they got knocked down really fast, but I was like, all right, whatever. At least I got yeah, that big scene where there's just explosions. It's like, oh, that's true. When he drops all the shoulder ones, yeah, that's that was huge. Sick. That was sick. Yeah, he wiped out. A good, I, I wanted like of those guys. Like, I wanted like full onslaught war machine. You know, where it's all going off, and I got a little bit of that. So sure. I, I was, I was happy. Yeah. Um, uh, even freaking Mantis had like a moment. In this she episode, did. In this oh yeah. yeah like, uh, I forgot. All of them <laughs> I forgot had, all like, about her. Yeah, there's so many characters running around that you forget about those. But yeah. like, Evan Wong is like, will be fun I'm out of here. Times, I think. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, and I, I think they did a really great Not, job with the balance of humor in this. I, one. I don't think it'll be fun to watch because you'll necessarily pick up things that you didn't catch, but just because you you'll remember things that you forgot. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, uh, although there was a there is one other point I wanted to bring up is like how this affects, because like we talked, you mentioned the deaths at the end and how it's not really impactful for us. I think the real impact is on Tony, and that's why it spends so much time on Spider-Man dying in his arms. Because he brought yeah, him Yeah, that was rough. He, 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 yeah, he brought That's him the one the that's rough, thing. because Tony is, this oh. goes to, the, I think, the other theme of the movie is fatherhood, um, which has been a theme for a lot of Marvel movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, ever since fucking Thor. Guardians Fa two, Even Ar yeah. Iron Man 1 had a kind of a father theme going yep, on yep. with like Tony's father. Like, this is what it's all been building to, is that like Thanos is a dad, and Tony Shitty is dad. a surrogate father to Peter, mm -hmm. and he wants to be a real father. Mm -hmm. Remember mm -hmm. at the beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he has to be the real dream. When they got that dad. pepper pots, and they were like, let's forget about all the other stuff where she wasn't here. They're getting married now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel good for them, you know. Well, <laughs> it it kind of works. Is like, it's it, it's basically because Iron Man three ended the way it did. Um, that they're trying to like God, I hate that. ignore the fact you that should. he promised <laughs> we Pepper that he should. would not be Iron Man. I know. Destroys all the, all like, the suits. Un yeah, unfortunately that has kind of put them in a rut where they keep having to try to figure out a way around that. But um, but I don't know. Like I'm curious what they're gonna do with Tony in the next movie because now he's been he's been a surrogate father. He wants to be a real dad. 
but because he brought Peter Parker into this whole mess, and every, it, they kept mentioning it in all the other movies, like, hey, why are you bringing this kid into he's a like, battlefield? He's, oh, dude, that he's on the young side. he goes to talk to Aunt May is going to be rough. Yeah, like, like so he's going to get fucked yeah. up. Like, he's going to be totally fucked up in yeah. this upcoming movie. And I, uh, I, I know we will get a rep, but the thing that was impactful to me about the ending was, like, so, yeah, whether or not these characters died, I didn't really, I, I think I wasn't so impacted, like, I would have been if Tony had died from the stabbing. Like, that would have really got to me. But the way they did it, I was kind of more like, it's just like a, oh, oh, no, no, why? You know, like, that's the way it was for me. But the thing, the fact that, like, it's Santa, Thanos, like, sitting down after killing, like, half the population of the universe, and then it's like, roll credits. That's where I was like, oh, shit. Oh, Here, shit. They weren't like, messing around. Have you read the Infinity War comic? No. Okay. I, the, the, <laughs> The fact that they have the farm scene is hilarious because in the co okay so in the movie mm -hmm. uh, the farm scene is he's wiped out everybody mm -hmm. and he sits down and he's satisfied. It's the last shot of the movie to show that the villain has won. Mm -hmm. In the fucking comic, it has the exact same thing happen, That's but awesome. it's the exact opposite. It's after Adam Warlock has stolen the Infinity Gauntlet and he oh. vanishes. He like oh, vanishes he Thanos to a farm to live out the rest of his days just farming food. And Thanos sits down on like a step and he's like. Well, that sucks. <laughs> like, that but it's like the same. Yeah. It's the same scene. It's hilarious how they did it. But no, so, like, yeah, no, that uh, that's awesome that there's that nod there. But for me, it was like, holy shit! Like, this is the movie they've been building to forever, and they've been toting it around like this is what it's all building towards is Infinity War, and they left it on a note that the villain wins. I was like, so good. Who does that? Who does that? I was like, Disney. that took some balls. Like, and that is awesome. But then I, here's, I got this uh, crazy perspective thing too, because there were two kids sitting right next to me in the theater. Did they start crying? They didn't start crying, but like, uh, they were all like cheering for the heroes and stuff. And then they all started turning to dust. And the kids got, <laughs> the kids got real quiet. And Mommy, started, why is Spider-Man? Oh, is he, are they dead? Like I heard that one time, right? And, blah, blah, blah. and then it's like, and Thanos wins. And then it's like credits, yeah. and I'm like, have a good one, kids! <laughs> you know, like, Enjoy explaining so that one, bad. Mom and Dad. Explain. <laughs> we just like, there's, and I'm trying to think of like how many kids out there, like, this is gonna be like a lesson of like, yeah, sometimes the villain wins. <laughs> you know, until how oh, yeah. many years? Until the next one. Well, it's, it's it comes out like a little over a year from now. The oh, okay. Avengers movie. So there's gonna be Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel. Ant-Man and the Wasp takes place like I'd be so pissed. Toward Nine. the beginning of this movie, just like separate area. It's, and Captain Marvel yeah. takes place in the 90s. So the next time we pick up from this moment is gonna be the next Avengers movie. Yeah, we got that little Captain it's like Marvel May tease at the end. Undead, Undead Priest brings up, you know, who who ends a movie with a bad guy winning. Uh, Vader has a word with you guys. And I have seen people comparing it to Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, it's their empire. I guess. I'm not saying no one's done Empire this Strikes Back does it have on, a- It ends on hope, though. Yeah. yeah. This um, one doesn't. Similar to The Last Jedi. Uh, <laughs> not necessarily. And some have the original they Avengers. Escape. So it's like, you still kind of have that. Sure, I, I guess so. Like, it's, it's back it's not the, the note we end on. We, no, we end no, on Thanos sitting down or really, Nick Fury going, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Th that was a fun little moment for him. I'm glad they at least... But that last shot of uh, Captain Marvel, that's our hope. That's our hope. I guess. Yeah. What's Captain Marvel going to do? I don't know. <laughs> what, what's she been doing? <laughs> she's, 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 that's, been frozen, that's a real question. She's been frozen or asleep. That's all, that, that's all that ever happens. Oh, so I'm saying multiverse. Oh, she's in some other universe? Ah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that. Hey, that could be something, actually. I mean, say. okay, we got we got to wrap this up, but, like, if you guys want to talk more about it in the post-show, we could do that, or we could talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp. No, 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 everybody's we, excited for that. Now, Quantum right? Realm. It's going to be, be the most so important movie. I'd if I was Paul Rudd. Like, everyone got yeah. together for this movie, Except and, like, everyone got to go and, like, do this shit, and they get, like, one little line of, like, Blah, 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 Ant-Man can't be here for this reason. Like, there's an Ant-Man and a, a Spider-Man. Fuck you, Paul Rudd. <laughs> like, I mean, that sucks so bad. Why did they swap release dates for this? Like, come on. Who's, ex like, nobody's well, gonna be excited gonna for Ant-Man and the Wasp. You know, one of the most important movies now. You, you know that, like, when he accepted that, it was a, like, well, it's Ant-Man. But I get to be, in a, like, an Avenger, and I get to be a part of this Marvel sure. universe. This is gonna be great. Could you imagine when they're like, yeah, you know, actually... We're we're good for Infinity War. Don't worry, we don't need you. Like I would I would have cried. Like, well, I wish no. you were there, Paul. Rebel. I think for post show we should talk because we were having a conversation in the office and we were all dying laughing, um, talking about if uh, Thanos's 
snap, everybody turns to dust, was happening in other movies? Yes. The most inconvenient times for that to happen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So right, look forward to promise. that. All right, well, we'll, we'll chat it up in, in our post show, uh, Sudden Death of Your First Member. It comes out over the weekend, so we'd love to have you join us there. Um, but otherwise, thank you for joining us for this yeah. overlong episode. We kind of ran over a bit. I knew it was going to happen with Infinity War. I guess. Fine. But uh, we'll call this the Infinity Cast. Sorry for spoiling everything. If you came in at the last minute and didn't realize we were talking about spoilers, that would suck. Uh, but we appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you. Love you. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. <laughs>